Hi, I'm Sarah. Before I dive into my story, please don't forget to like and subscribe for more insights into my journey through some pretty turbulent family times. Growing up, I always felt like I was living in the shadow of my parents' failed marriage. After their divorce, life settled into a quieter rhythm with just Dad and me, until he met Abigail. She came into our lives like a whirlwind, promising a fresh start and all the emotional support we thought we'd lost. Initially, it seemed like we might actually become one of those happy, blended families you see on TV. But as you'll see, not everything is as it appears. In the early days, Abigail was all smiles, baking cookies, suggesting movie nights, always asking about my day at school. But it didn't take long for the atmosphere to shift. I remember coming home one afternoon to find my room slightly rearranged. Abigail had decided it needed a woman's touch. She meant well, probably, but it felt like an intrusion, a small proclamation that things were changing, whether I liked it or not. What do you think, Sarah? It's just a little more organized, Abigail said, gesturing around my newly adjusted room. Her tone was light, but her eyes didn't quite meet mine. It's fine, I guess. Just would have been nice to decide on my own space, you know? I tried to keep my voice steady, but there was a tremor of frustration I couldn't quite hide. Abigail brushed off my comment with a laugh. Oh, you teenagers always want your independence. But trust me, this looks much better. The changes kept coming. Dinners became silent affairs, with Abigail dominating conversations and deciding the menu without considering my likes and dislikes. It was sushi one night, which she knew I hated, and spicy Thai the next. My father, bless his heart, seemed oblivious, caught up in the romance of his new marriage. Sarah, why don't you try some of the sushi? It's good to try new things, my father encouraged, unaware of the tension. I've tried it before, Dad. It's just not for me, I replied, poking at the food with my fork, feeling the sting of being unheard. Abigail watched our exchange with an unreadable expression, then turned to my father with a perfect smile. Honey, she'll learn to love it. We can keep introducing her to new things. As months turned into a year, the strain grew. Abigail's true colors began to show more clearly. There were whispers on the phone I wasn't meant to hear, sharp comments cloaked in sweetness, and plans made that conveniently left me out. Each small act was a thread pulled from the fabric of our family, and I felt increasingly isolated. Going shopping, Sarah. Your father and I need some alone time this weekend, Abigail announced one evening her words casual, as if it were the most natural thing in the world. Sure, have fun, I managed to say, masking the hurt. It was just another weekend where I'd find solace in my books and music, the things that didn't exclude or judge me. These early days with Abigail might have seemed minor to an outsider, but they set the stage for the bigger battles to come. As her disregard for me grew, so did my resolve. I was learning that not all support comes in the form you expect, and some smiles hide more than kindness a sharp note hidden beneath Abigail's breezy tone. Hey, Sarah, could you help me set the table? We're having guests over tonight, and I want everything to look perfect. Her voice rang out. Sure, Abigail. Who's coming over? I asked, trying to keep my voice neutral as I moved towards the dining room. Just some colleagues of your father. You know, people it would be good for him to impress. Abigail laid out the silverware meticulously, her hands steady and sure. As I placed the plates... I couldn't help but feel the undercurrent of tension. These dinners were becoming more frequent, and with each one, Abigail seemed to push the boundaries further, turning our home into a stage for her performances. Make sure to wear something nice, okay? Something mature. No more of those childish t-shirts, she added, eyeing my casual outfit with thinly veiled disapproval. Yeah, I'll change, I muttered, feeling the sting of her words. Each comment was a small needle, sowing a wider divide between us. The evening arrived with its guests, and Abigail floated among them, the perfect hostess. I tried to blend into the background, but she had other plans. Why don't you tell everyone about your school project, Sarah? Abigail suddenly suggested. A sweet smile plastered across her face as all eyes turned to me. I froze for a moment, not prepared. It's just a standard science project, about plant cells, I stammered feeling the room's interest wane at the mundane topic. Oh, but she's not telling it right. Sarah actually almost set the kitchen on fire trying to do an experiment at home, Abigail interjected, laughter spilling from her lips as if it were the funniest anecdote. The guest chuckled, 
and I felt my face burn with humiliation. It was just a small mistake. I tried to defend myself, my voice small. Don't be embarrassed, dear. We all have our little blunders, Abigail said, patting my shoulder in a mock consoling gesture that only served to heighten my embarrassment. As the evening wore on, I noticed my father's eyes on me, a flicker of concern crossing his features. He caught me by the elbow gently as I tried to escape to my room. Sarah, is everything all right? Abigail didn't mean anything by that joke, he said, his voice low and filled with a worry that seemed new. It's not just the joke, Dad. It's everything. She's always making me feel small, I confessed, the words tumbling out in a rush. I know she can be a bit much sometimes, but she's trying, Sarah. We need to give her a chance, he replied, though his voice lacked conviction. I don't know how much more I can take, Dad. It's like I'm a stranger in my own home, I said, my voice barely a whisper. He sighed, squeezing my shoulder. We'll talk about this, okay? Just... not tonight. The promise hung in the air, fragile and unconvincing. As I retreated to my room, the sound of laughter and clinking glasses followed me, a reminder of how far apart Abigail and I had drifted and how blind my father was to the widening gap. The night's events were a turning point, the moment when the small cracks in our family facade started to show. It was becoming clear that Abigail's mask of perfection was slipping, revealing something far less benign beneath. But how much more would it take for everyone else to see it, too? You're not going anywhere this weekend, Sarah. We've got plans. Plans? What plans? My voice edged with suspicion as Abigail laid out her latest decree. We're visiting my sister upstate. It's been arranged for weeks. I'm surprised your father hasn't mentioned it. But he hadn't, and that was the first thread that unraveled. Later, when I cornered Dad in his study, his confusion was palpable. Upstate? No. Abigail mentioned something about visiting her friend in town. I don't remember anything about her sister. The discrepancies grew, each one a little explosion in the minefield that was becoming our household. At dinner that night, as Abigail chatted about her plans, Dad finally confronted her. I thought you said her friend was in town. Now it's your sister upstate? Darling, you must have misunderstood. It's always been my sister. Her smile didn't reach her eyes, and I saw Dad's jaw tighten. It's just, you've been forgetful lately, mixing things up. Abigail's voice was syrupy sweet, too sweet. Dad, you're not forgetful. I've noticed it too. She says one thing one day and something else the next. I chimed in, unable to keep silent. The argument that night was long and loud. Accusations flew, harsh words that couldn't be taken back. Abigail's facade cracked, her usual charm replaced by a cold fury. I've been nothing but dedicated to this family, and this is how you repay me? By questioning my integrity? Integrity? You've been lying to us both, Abigail. What else haven't you been honest about? Dad's voice rose a rare anger bubbling to the surface. As the fight spilled into the early hours, I lay in bed, the echoes of their angry voices a bitter lullaby. The next morning, the house was thick with unsaid things. Dad looked tired, worn out from a night spent on the living room couch. Something's not right, Sarah. Your school called about the fees, said they were overdue. I thought Abigail handled it last month. I looked up from my homework, confusion knitting my brows. She said she took care of it, I didn't think to check. My dad rubbed his forehead, a clear sign of his growing frustrations. And the credit card bill came in sky high, charges for stuff we never bought. Maybe there's been some mistake, I offered, though doubt shadowed my thoughts. No, it's clear as day. She's been lying about a lot of things, Sarah, not just these bills. The gravity of his words sank in, making the air between us heavy. It wasn't just petty misunderstandings anymore. Abigail's actions were affecting everything. Later that week, the final straw broke when my dad discovered a series of messages on Abigail's phone. They weren't just friendly chats. They were plans and lies, all laid bare in the glow of the screen. So, all this time, you've been playing us? His voice was calm, but the hurt was palpable. John, it's not what it looks like. I can explain everything. Abigail's voice was smooth, too smooth. You've been using the credit card for your personal leisure and lying about Sarah's school fees. The disbelief in his voice turned to anger as he confronted her with the evidence. I needed some things, John. 
It wasn't always like this. I just got carried away. I'm sorry. Her apology sounded hollow, rehearsed. I trusted you, Abigail. You were supposed to be part of this family, not against us. Dad, I told you there were things off about her. Why didn't you believe me? I couldn't keep the accusation from my voice, nor the bitterness. I know, Sarah. I should have seen it. I was... I was just hoping too much. That's it, then. We can't go on like this. I want a divorce, Abigail. You need to leave. The words hung heavy, a final verdict on years of built-up grievances. Abigail tried to argue, to plead, but the decision was irrevocable. After Abigail stormed out, slamming the door behind her, the house felt eerily silent. Dad sat down heavily, his face in his hands. Are you okay, Dad? I will be, Sarah. We will be. I'm just sorry it took this long to see the truth. Sorry you had to go through all this. It's not your fault, Dad. We both got fooled. We spent the rest of the evening talking, really talking, about everything that had been twisted and buried under Abigail's manipulations. It was painful, digging through the mess, but necessary. Lying in bed later that night, I couldn't shake off the mix of relief and anger swirling inside me. Relief that Abigail was finally gone. Anger at the scars she left behind. How had she managed to deceive us so thoroughly? How many others out there wore the same deceitful masks, pretending to care while plotting their next move? Sleep was slow to come, but when it did, it brought a semblance of peace. At least now, the lies were in the past, and the truth, however harsh, lay bare before us. Sarah, can we talk? Just five minutes, please. I hesitated at the doorway, finding Abigail seated at the kitchen table, a mess of paperwork spread out in front of her. The air was thick with desperation. I guess you've got five minutes, I conceded, though my guard was fully up. Listen, I know things haven't been great between us. I've made mistakes, big ones, and I'm sorry, really sorry. But I need your help. Help with what, exactly? My voice was cool, distant. I want to make things right with your dad. If he sees us getting along, maybe he'll reconsider. And the divorce? I need a better settlement to start over. You know I'm not from here. I have nowhere to go. The plea in her eyes didn't move me. Not anymore. You think, after everything, I'd help you manipulate Dad again? It's not manipulation. It's... It's survival, Sarah. You've always been mature for your age. You understand how the world works. I understand more than you think. And what I understand is that you can't just play with people's lives because you're trying to survive. But Sarah, everyone makes mistakes. Can't you forgive me? For your dad's sake. There's a difference between a mistake and what you did, Abigail. You made choices. Hurtful, selfish choices. Sarah, please. I'm really alone here. Just talk to your dad. See if he'll listen to you. You have his ear. You're right, I do and I'm going to tell him to push forward with the divorce as fast as he can. You don't mean that. Come on, Sarah, show some heart. Abigail, my heart is exactly why I can't help you. You've caused enough damage. She stood up abruptly, her chair scraping back violently. So, this is it? You're going to just throw me out? I'm not throwing you out. You walked yourself out the moment you decided to lie and cheat your way through our lives. Fine. If that's how you want to play it, see if I don't make this difficult for every one of us. You do what you have to do, Abigail. Just know that I'll be doing what I have to do as well. As I turned to leave, her voice cracked behind me. Sarah, I really am sorry. I just lost my way. I hope you find it, Abigail. But not here. Not with us. Walking away, I felt the weight of years of tension lift slightly as I stood up for what's right, from setting boundaries that should have been there all along. So, how are you feeling about everything now, Sarah? Sitting across from my dad in our freshly reorganized living room, the early morning light casting a soft glow around us, I pondered his question. It was the first time in a long time we'd had a moment of peace like this. I feel lighter, Dad, like we can finally breathe again, just us. He nodded, taking a sip of his coffee. I'm sorry it took so long for me to see what was happening. Abigail. She was good at what she did. She was, but we're past that now. It's just us. And that's enough. I have been thinking about selling the house, maybe finding somewhere new for us. A fresh start. What do you think? That sounds amazing. Somewhere we can make new memories, just the two of us. 
Our conversation was cut short by the doorbell. I got up to answer it, half expecting to see a delivery or a neighbor. Instead, it was Abigail, looking more defeated than ever. Sarah, I... I need help. I've got nowhere to go, no one to turn to. Her appearance was disheveled, a stark contrast to the polished persona she always presented. My heart twisted a bit at the sight, not out of sympathy, but because of the stark reminder of how far she had fallen. We can't help you, Abigail. You need to leave. But I've got nothing left. Everything I had was tied to your father, and now... That was your choice, Abigail. You chose to lie, to manipulate. You can't expect us to pick up the pieces for you. She looked between me and my dad, desperation etched deep into her features. My dad, standing behind me now, added his voice to mine. Abigail, Sarah's right. You need to leave and figure out your life. We're moving on. As she turned away, defeated, my dad put his arm around my shoulders. You did well, Sarah. I know that wasn't easy. It's what needed to be done, for us to really start over. You're right, Sarah. And I'm proud of you, more than you know. Later that day, as we sat back in our living room, going through listings for new houses, I reflected on our journey. It taught me about standing up for myself and about the importance of boundaries. Now that we've reached the end of Sarah's story, here's a question to spark some thoughts. Do you believe that people truly reap what they sow, just like Abigail faced the consequences of her actions? Or are there instances where fate might not be enough of a teacher? Share your thoughts and experiences in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed the journey with Sarah, and subscribe to the channel for more stories like this. Your support helps us bring more content that you love. Looking forward to reading your insights.